Hello, I am Diego Lizarazo and I'm trying to create um, perhaps a couple of videos, small videos around a suggestion that I received on YouTube. First, I would like to remind you about my contact, so my blog, my Twitter, my Twitch channel, of course, and especially uh, of mention, I guess it's my game templates that you can find here and my YouTube channel. Most of the videos I'm uploading later here, even if I'm streaming them or if it's some sort of a screencast that I'm doing, I try to put everything there. And here you can find some of the Construct 2 templates that, that you may use for free. So, now, what is, what, what is the question that I received in, in my YouTube channel? And it was just a suggestion around, like, why don't you create something for functions in Construct 2? So I'm going to jump into project. I already created a couple of elements and I added a couple of things just to uh, explain like in the video, like to make it more more visible whatever we're going to do. First thing I added this sprite that it, it is an enemy. Uh, and uh, right now I'm just going to add a behavior that is going to be a bullet. I'm going to leave it like that and I'm actually going to put a speed zero at the moment. The other thing that I added is the um, the plugin of touch, so that's going to allow us to touch the screen or use our mouse and do something with that. And that's very much it. The oh, oh sorry. Uh, the other thing that I added uh, to the enemy is that I have two other animations that are yellow and blue, so just to make them a little bit different. And that's it. So. Uh, what is going to be the example? Well, the first thing that we have to do to when we are talking about functions is to add the plugin of functions. So the new object that we have here that uh, I don't know where it is, of course. I'm just going to look for it and it's called function. Okay. So how's this thing going to work? Uh, basically, you can put in a function here, an event that is going to be calling functions, almost anything that you can do in other events. But the thing is that usually you are going to uh, call a function uh, many times. You are going to call a time, like a, a type, a, a number of events many times. And you don't want to be just writing the same code over and over and over again. That would be perfect to perhaps uh, modify, oh, where did I do it? Here. To modify um, one of my first games that I did, I think it was this one, uh, so it was at Super G, I don't remember if it was Super G, no, Space Chain, I don't know if I have it here, okay, this is in my blog, uh, perhaps I haven't shared that, that one there, and, and it's it was one of the first games that I did with, with Construct 2, and I realized that I was repeating a lot of code, so that should be a full video, just to, to create, how recreate, that game and, and make it better but well right now what we're going to do is let's suppose that I just want to create an enemy and that's going to be our function create enemy so I'm going to write the function first and we're going to start modifying from there so I'm going to add an event I'm going to say function and you have two main things here one is on function and this is when you're going to be calling the function and then compare parameters. This video today I'm just going to concentrate on the basics so I'm just going to use on function. And here I'm just going to call it create enemy. So this is important because you could create as many functions as you want and you have to call them by name. So let's suppose that, I, well I'm going to copy paste here and I could have another function that could be, I don't know, destroy enemy and I could make another function that could be, I don't know, uh, since I added the bullet behavior to this one, uh, I am going to say a stop enemy. So that one is not going to, and each one can do different things. So for example, a stop enemy, since this one has a bullet behavior, I could say pick the enemy, well pick the enemies, and just say that the speed is zero. That's it. And then what if I just say uh, destroy enemy 
Well, then I'm just going to say here, enemy destroy. That's it. You basically add actions to uh, do whatever you want. So this is the one that I really wanted to create. This uh, We're going to put a little, a little bit more of effort into this one. And uh, what I want to do is to create an enemy that is going to be system create object. In this case is going to be the enemy. And because what I want to do is to create the enemy, whatever I do touch, whatever I click on the on the screen of our game, I'm just going to say touch dot x and then touch touch dot y. Okay. Now originally my enemy has a speed zero, so I'm just also going to add something here like set set speed. I'm going to add a random random value that of course I'm changing this mm, that it could be between I don't know 10 and 300 I don't have any control on that and the other thing that I'm going to do uh, well I should have changed the animations right so I'm just going to do something like this I'm going to rename them so I'm going to duplicate this and this is going to be uh, color one this is going to be called color two and you're going to see why I'm renaming them I'm just being lazy on, on how to create this and also to make it uh, random so I'm going to do this so I am going to change the animation for color and if you remember that's why I named them all color and then ampersand and then I'm going to add, uh, well in this case I'm not going to use random, I'm going to use choose. That it works similar to the random, but it's going to pick one of the numbers that I am adding to the list. In this case it's one or two or three. That are the colors here. So it's going to be able to pick the right thing. So, um, what what's going to happen now? Uh, right now these functions even if they have actions, they, there's nothing that is calling them. So that means that if I try to run my project, I'm going to do it on Explorer, uh, nothing happens. I touch, I click, and nothing happens. So what I'm going to add is like the call for the function. So in this case, I'm going to say that when the, uh, any touch ends, I am going to call my function and it's going to be here and in this case it's going to be called create enemy and that's it now this piece of code basically is going to be replaced by all these actions so this action is almost like repeating all this here and it should work so now let's let's see I start touching and it's creating enemies with random values which is cool but now uh, if I am calling the function just in one place well it makes it clearer like it just like you can read it whenever I touch somewhere I just create an enemy and then all these things I can at any moment uh, change what is creating an enemy but it would be awesome if not only I can do this like one time. I, I shouldn't. Well, I, it would be great if I I can call the the function in, at other times. So what happens if I want to start creating enemies every let's say two seconds? So I can go system and say every x seconds, every two seconds. So here I sh I want to create an enemy, and if I didn't have the function. I would have to copy all these events here so I could uh, literally just copy here and do it here oh. control C control B okay but uh, let's suppose that I have to make a modification on how to create enemies I would have to change the code here and here and everywhere else whenever I have everything on a function the only thing that I have to do is just to call it here 
and then all the modifications that I do here are going to affect this and this goal. So now let's let's see. If I touch, I create enemy, but also every two seconds, I'm also going to be creating enemies. That in this case is the position zero zero because I'm not touching it in a particular place. So this touch X and touch Y is just going to be the position zero zero. But hey, it doesn't really matter. So uh, you see that right now, just calling twice the function, it, it still works. So uh, what happens about the, the other ones? What about like destroy enemy and what about uh, uh, stop enemy? I'm going to make them like go even slower. So 100, that's it. So I am going to say that, uh, this is going to be interesting. Uh, well, it doesn't matter. It's going to do uh, like a weird behavior, but at least it's going to straighten my problem. What happens if I touch an object that in this case is going to be the enemy. I want to stop that enemy. So I, or stop the enemies in general, so I'm just going to say call function uh, stop enemy. At this point I'm going to mention that I do try to pay attention to what, uh, well, how the function is called so you see that I'm writing it exactly the same and it's because if you don't do it right uh, well it's not going to give you any error but at the same time it's not going to do anything so it has to be exactly the same thing and uh, this is case sensitive so if you write this with like uh, everything is capitalized like a stop enemy all capital letters and this is not written the same and then, then it's not going to work so just be careful of that be mindful of that so let's suppose, well, I'm going to have at some point a new monster. And you see that it's stopping the enemies, all the enemies, whenever I touch only one of them. And at the same time, it's creating a new one. Why? Because it's executing two things at the same time. It's executing on, I touch an enemy. But at the same time, a touch is started, so it's calling both functions. It's calling a stop enemy and create enemy. So I'm doing both at the same time. But hey, it works. It illustrates what, what I wanted to do. And now, um, how do I say that, like, how do I call this on destroy enemy? I am just going to create another object over here. And it's going to be, uh, what do I know? Green sprite, something like this. It doesn't really matter. The only thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to call it destroyer. And I am going to uh, do something similar to this. So on When I touch an object, that in this case is not going to be the enemy, it's going to be the destroyer, I'm going to call a function, that in this case is not going to be a uh, stop enemy, it's going to be destroy enemy. And you see that I'm uh, I'm not specifying which enemy, and this is something that I'm going to leave for another video. That is like how to specify which enemy I want to do it. But you are going to see it like this. Uh, so here I'm going to and I'm going to create a couple more, and then I touch the destroyer, and it destroys all of them. But of course, <laughs> uh, it's also creating a new one because I'm doing. I'm calling basically, uh, or I'm triggering both uh, events that are calling on its own time different functions. This one destroy enemy, but also the one for creating enemy. That, uh, that is also here. So, well, basically, this is the first um, video around functions with Construct2. Uh, it's a little bit late, so I don't know if I'm going to create another video today. If not, I'm going to do it tomorrow. That is going to be uh, something around, yeah, functions and like a little bit more of detail on how to use some parameters. But well, you you got the basics here. That is just to create an event that has a name of the function and then some actions, and then how to call them. That is just 
having your normal event with a normal uh, condition and then just using the call function uh, action that is going to call whatever function you created. Um, I'm going to save this and, and, and then quite likely tomorrow we're going to start checking like how how to modify this and how to make it work better. Thanks for paying attention and have a great night.